You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a satellite sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You're listening to Satellite Sisters. We're so happy to be with you today. I'm Leanne Dolan. Today, I'm in Bend, Oregon. I'm a writer, a producer, and I'm finishing my novel here. So you're going to hear all about that later. But our question of the week comes to us from Julie Dolan. She wants to know everyone's favorite fall soup. Liz, what do you got? Oh, it, it is soup season. I'm going to have to go with butternut squash sisters. I love butternut squash soup. And it's the kind of thing that I don't make at home. So I always order it. If I go out and it's on the menu, boom. Yes. Butternut squash, please. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, isn't this revealing? This is Julie <laughs> Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas. And my favorite fall soup is the Barefoot Contessa Italian wedding soup. I think it's perfect because you can serve it to someone who's two years old or 102, and they're going to love it. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Liam? <laughs> oh, absolutely. The Julia Chow French onion soup. Nope. I mean, I just love that soup but it's too hot to eat in the summer here. You can't have it. So when it's fall and you can cook down those onions and it's just perfect with a little cheddar toast or, you know, a cheese toast on top. Ah, it just says fall to me. I love that soup. So hard. That's an ambitious (laughs) soup. I'm impressed. (laughs) Well, so is that Italian wedding soup, Liz. Okay. Multi-step. Okay. (laughs) That's okay, Liz. Just keep buying that butternut squash soup. Oh, it is delicious. <laughs> you, you can get butternut squash soup takeout at most decent grocery stores. So there you have it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a lot more on the show besides soup, although I'm sure we could fill an hour talking about soup. That's how much <laughs> yes, we, we could. There's some lingering topics there, but go ahead, Liam. What else do we have right. on the show today? Julie, you were invited to a wedding with a very perplexing dress code we're going to discuss. Yes. All right. Okay, Liz, we have a sports pod today, some great news and just some really disturbing news about women's professional soccer, right? Yeah, really, really. It's it's all in the news today. So we're going to talk about a little. Okay, and then I have an exciting new fashion segment. I can't (laughs) wait to share with you Blake Shelton's collaboration with Land's End. Oh, Oh. I mean, oh, land. three words I never thought I'd hear together. Blake Shelton collab. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think it's the first time we've talked about Blake Shelton on the show. <laughs> so it. that is really exciting. Yes. Forget Fashion Week in Paris. It's all happening at Land's End is all I'm saying. <laughs> right. But well, Julie, I mean, Liz, sorry. You have an incredible update from last week's podcast. Yes. I could not be here. Sister Sheila filled in. What's happening? Well, I mean. There was a thrilling behind the scenes on last week's show that we could not share with you at the time. Right, Julie? Correct. We were, we were just trying to get the show done. But meanwhile, a clock had started. Here's what happened. Uh, if you listen to last week's show, you'll know that filling in for Leon was our sister, Sheila, who said she was on the verge of becoming a grandmother for the first time. We talked all about it. Urban Nana Julie had a lot of good advice. Sheila had sort of a package she wanted to pitch to her daughter, Ruthie. It was relaxed. It was fun. She had two more weeks before the baby was coming. So everyone was excited. Well, no. So we had recorded that on Sunday, and then we're recording the rest of the show on Tuesday, as we are now, Tuesday morning. And while we're recording, we got a text from Sheila that Ruthie and Jeremy had gone to the hospital, that it looked like baby girl was coming early. So we are trying to finish the show so that we can get the show posted before baby girl is even born. Right, Julie? It was stressful. It was, well, it was exciting. It was more stressful for you, Liz, because you were actually posting the show. But yes, yes, Yes. it was really, you know, we were down to the wire trying to finish it and trying to get it, um, get it up so that everyone could hear about it before the baby arrived. Okay. And then of course, because this is inevitable, 
Then we had a tech snafu. Mm -hmm. So normally the show is fully up and posted by noon Pacific time. Well, for some reason, me trying to post it up to our platform, it was just rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. So I had to go to the, you know, the chat bot who pretends to be a real person, but I don't believe that for one second. And then they escalated it. I'm like, well, you know, what's escalating. Baby girl being born is escalating. (laughs) I think we, I think we have to escalate getting this show posted so anyway finally we got it sorted out you may have noticed the show was a couple of hours late meanwhile Sheila's now communicating with us that people have settled into the hospital what's going on and so here is the good news baby girl was born on the 29th uh so on Thursday Sheila says everyone is healthy and happy her name adorable name is Evelyn Maisie don't you think that's sweet, you guys? So I love sweet. it. I love it. And it's a very special name because it is the second Evelyn in our family. Yes. Of course, I have a granddaughter named Evelyn as well. She's Evelyn Louise. But our family is big enough to have two Evelyns in it, don't you think? <laughs> Yes. Yes. So it's very, very exciting. Uh, They are home now from the hospital, Ruthie, Jeremy, and Evelyn Maisie. Um, And Sheila reports that she has replaced Instagram scrolling with Evelyn scrolling. But now she has nothing but new pictures of Evelyn in her feed. And she's just loving it. So she said she was over the moon. And, and I, I think any new grandmother understands that feeling. There is, we have not received the official photo to post yet. As soon as we have one, we promise we will do that. But we just wanted to let you know what you didn't know behind the scenes, because it was super excited, very thrilling for all of us to have a new baby girl in the family. Yeah, that was great. That's great. Good reporting, Liz. I mean, you guys did a great show last week and and then the drama was doubled. Who knew? You really held, you held it under pressure. I can tell but, you did it. Well, you, you know, Lee and you had the day off, but you did check in with me at noon to say, how's the show going? I did. I was things were escalating <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> things were escalating here. And I didn't want to bother you because I know you're trying to finish a novel. So I was I was trying to leave you alone. But when you asked, I'm like, ooh, how did she know this isn't working? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. I am up here in Bend, Oregon. I've been here with two week, for two weeks with my husband and our dog. Uh, that's how we travel now. That's how we roll with our old dog. Um, and I am trying to get my next novel in. Now, technically, my due date was October 1, which was on a Saturday. So I asked for like a couple days extension, like I was a college sophomore with mononucleosis. And (laughs) um, uh, I was granted like a a one week extension because my editor is currently working on another project. That's how it works. Like your editor is working one book at a time and she's finishing up one book. So she said, yeah, take an extra week. So of course I am taking it. Uh, You you only want to make it better. But, um, you know, it's a lot of work actually wrangling an 80,000 word document into shape because it's just a lot of words you know <laughs> I mean do you really do you, do you monitor the word count like you're like uh, in fifth grade trying to write a thousand word essay you know oh yes. ooh, I'm up yes. to 65,000 words okay good Yes. No, exactly that. I actually, when I got here in Bend two weeks ago, I thought, oh, I I really only have about 10,000 more words straight. And then I realized it's really 20,000 more words. I'm a little behind, you know, (laughs) I'm a little behind where I wanted to be, but I always say fiction writing is based a lot on momentum. You know, Mm -hmm. one good writing day begets another begets another. And I will say I, July, my momentum was low, my, Mm -hmm. and I am paying for it now, but since August one, I've been like working my, uh, working my tushy off. So I, I should be able to hand it in. We drive home on Friday. I should be able to hand it in by then, but it's just, if you, if you decide to change something at the end of the book, like, oh, I think this character needs a bigger role. That means you have to go back to the beginning of the book and kind of set up that character. Mm -hmm. Or the same thing can happen. Like you mentioned a bunch of people in the beginning, but the story takes you in a slightly different direction and you don't service those characters. So then you have to go back in and cut them. Or you try to remember like, what kind of car did I say she was driving 240 pages ago? And then you have to find, you know, 
It's yep. super easy to forget details like that or just like attitudes like, oh, as you get to know your characters a little bit better, you need to make the beginning of the book match the end of the book. So every kind of new page you write at the end of the book, say the last 50 pages sort of has a corollary in the beginning of the book where you have to set that up. Mm -hmm. So that's why it just takes a really long time to do that. And it's very intense work because oh. you're cutting and pasting, you're moving things around to be very focused. It's because, you know, this stuff is starting to stick now, like you're actually creating the novel and the momentum. And so if you put it in the wrong place, you're, you're just, it's, it may be stuck there forever. It's hard to describe, but like, it sounds like you could use an assistant or two. Maybe you'd like to employ your two sisters to help. Yeah, you. no, again, no, no, you don't, I'm not, no, no. It's, one thing I could never do is make stuff up. I like <laughs> the idea of writing 80,000 words of stuff that I made up in my own head. That just feels impossible to me. If you ask me to write 80,000 words of nonfiction where I could go look it up and then write it down. I might be able to do that, but fiction, no way, sister. Yeah. I think the big difference is that fiction really is a solo effort, mm -hmm. right? It's not a collaborative thing. You know, you're not working in a team all towards the same goal. Eventually, yes. When I hand this over to my editor, then it will be a team effort. And then we'll work with the marketing people and you work with the copy editors and you work with the cover designer. But for the first, you know, eight months, you're really you know, out here, just solo working on stuff. Mm -hmm. So having assistants and stuff, unless they're really writing for you, it's not that helpful. Yeah. You know, you, you just really need, <laughs> you really need to do the work yourself. So that's where I'm at now. I'm so close. I can taste the ending, you know, almost everything is written. I'm fixing all the things in the front of the book and making all those and then all changes. And then I'll write actually the last chapter. I think when I do that and then I will send it in and then the whole rewrite process starts. But, um, but that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks. So I've done almost nothing in Ben, but work. I will say that. <laughs> That's too right. bad. But well, it's but it's exciting. what you love to do. So yeah. that's good, yeah. right? You're, yeah. You know. Yes. So it's a lovely, but if you live here, no, you haven't seen me. I haven't been anywhere. I haven't called you. I'm sorry. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't done it. I walk the dog in the morning and I go to a yoga class in the afternoon. But other than that, I'm just it's sitting in, uh, sit, sitting at my computer, but you're right. It's what I like to do. It's a pleasure to be able to do it. Well, I, we have no doubt that you'll get it done. It's all going to be good, Leanne. It will be in the rear view mirror shortly. That's yes, what I think. Yes. Well, while you were working so hard, Leon, I I got to go to a wedding this weekend. So happy to do this. This was a wedding for two people that have found each other late in life. And they wanted, but the dress code for the wedding was denim and diamonds, okay? And because they really wanted people to wear whatever. Okay, that's what they said when we inquired what exactly do they did they mean by that? Okay, this was a wedding that was at a hotel in Plano, Texas. Um, but here's what I know, sisters. Denim and diamond as a dress code, that's a trap, okay? It's a trap, okay? <laughs> because I've been to a den denim and diamond event and I wore jeans and a boot and boots because I it was a denim and diamond mm -hmm. and I was woefully underdressed. Yeah. Okay. See what I mean? It's a yeah. trap. Don't go yeah. for that. <laughs> All right. All and right. you were okay. probably under diamond by Texas standards. <laughs> Possibly, Liz. Possibly. Okay. So I wasn't falling for that. So here is my pro tip that I am going to share with all of you. If you get invited to a denim and diamond wedding in particular, okay, it's easy for your spouse, partner, your plus one. They can wear jeans and the boots. Okay. But for you, for girls, okay dress like you're going to the country music awards. Okay. <laughs> it's the CMAs. Okay. That's the look that you want to bring. Think Carrie, think Reba, who would pick, pick your favorite country music star. That's what you want to dress like for the wedding. And you're going to be fine. Wait, is that what you did this weekend? I'm having trouble. Yes. That. Yes. <laughs> okay. CMAs. Yes. Liz. <laughs> I, I like, I kicked it up a notch. Yes. And I was perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. My right. husband wore jeans and boots. Okay. He had a blazer on. He looked cool. Okay. That's what they wear at the CMAs. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> People were in long dresses. They were in short dresses, but they were dressed up. They could have received a, an award. Okay. That's all I'm saying. 
Well, Julie, just wait until you hear about the Blake Shelton collab with Lance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think you missed an opportunity. I picked something out for you, and I think you missed okay. an opportunity. That's all okay. I'm it's hard to believe that our Liz Dolan has anything left to learn. I mean, we feel like she knows it all here at Satellite Sisters, but not Liz. She is a lifelong learner, so she is all over Masterclass. Masterclass is accessible on your phone, web, or smart TV, and it offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the top of their fields. Oh, Liz, that's you. You're at the top of your field, and you still have things left to learn. What Masterclasses have you taken? Quite a range, Leanne. I mean, you are going to be shocked when you check this out, how many classes there are. So I started with Issa Rae. She's super creative, you know, writer, television producer. And that was really about creativity and storytelling. Really loved that. I mean, the, the, Classes are not long, so they're like short snippets of things, really fun to watch. Then I went to Dr. Matthew Walker, like the sleep expert, oh. because come on, ladies, couldn't we all use a little more understanding <laughs> of sleep? And you just a day does not go by that you don't read another article about sleep hygiene, sleep health. Anyway, I went to the sleep. And then because I lost my cosmetics bag and had to go replace everything, I watched the Bobby Brown class. Oh, she's and, the best. She's an expert at oh the top God. of her field. <laughs> the best. And I even downloaded the class guide to that one. So yeah, I'm, and it's so easy to use. I literally just lay on my couch with my phone and I play it on my phone, but cast it to my smart TV. Boom, done. So relaxing and learning all at the same time. You heard it here. Liz Dolan has stuff le left to learn, and she is learning from Masterclass. They have over 150 exclusive classes taught by the instructors you know and love. It's an immersive learning experience. Liz, have you found that? Are you completely immersed? <laughs> immersive, immersive. And Leah, you would have appreciated that Bobby Brown, when she's talking about beauty and all of that, the example she uses of lifelong beauty is Ali McGraw, who I know is one of your favorites. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable. Well, she is. Ali's the best. Oh, I love it, Liz. All right. And it's super flexible. You can explore lessons in any order you'd like across your phone, tablet, Apple TV, computer, or on the go with the audio mode, which is great. And lessons are approximately 10 to 15 minutes long. So that's super easy to fit into your everyday life. Yeah. We're so happy that Masterclass is a sponsor of Satellite Sisters and they are too. We highly recommend that you check it out. You can get unlimited access to every class. And as a Satellite Sisters listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash sisters now. That's masterclass.com slash sisters, masterclass.com slash sisters for 15% off masterclass. Thanks, masterclass. Oh, Julie, just relax. Just, just relax because it's the time of the show when we get to talk about our favorite topic and that's Osea oh, body Oh, bite. good. Phew, I can't wait, Leanne. I've been waiting. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, there's been a lot on TikTok and the internet about butterboards, but I would yes. like to submit to the Satellite Sisters that they skip the butterboards for eating and just get Osea's Undaria body butter and just put it all over their body. A much better way to spend your time. Don't you think, Joel? Yes. Skip the board, skip the radishes, just body butter. And Lynn, it's fall now. You know, this is when it's cold and dry. You need that body butter even more. Oh yeah. It's nutrient rich seaweed. Julie, that is the hero ingredient in okay. the Osea Andaria butter, body butter. Okay. Seaweed. Then you get ceramides. What is that? Ingredient? Ceramide. <laughs> ceramides. Ceram They're essential, Leanne. Okay. That's the most, that's the only word you need to know as you're aging. Ceramides. <laughs> okay. And then whipped shea butter. And then that, that, they whip that all together. They give it a light citrusy marini scent. Oh, and I you love know what that. that's going to do? It's going to transform your dry, crepey skin to feel smooth, soft, and supple. I can totally attest. I'm up here in Oregon this week. It's been very dry up here. I am just body buttering every chance I get. And I'm getting 72 hours of proven hydration. It's fantastic. For clean body care that gives you facial skincare level results, you've got to try Osea. 
And right now we have a special discount for Satellite Sisters listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with promo code SATSISTERS at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and orders over $50 get free shipping. You're going to want it all. Go to oseamalibu.com and osea is spelled O-S-E-A. oseamalibu.com, promo code SATSISTERS. Thanks, Osea. Hey, we're the Satellite Sisters. Lee and Liz and Julie here. We're back. All right, Liz, what's happening in your world? <laughs> okay. Is it just me? Good, good toss, by the way, Lee. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. I don't think she's ever used that before. <laughs> okay. All right. Over to you, Liz. <laughs> I've been doing this 22 years. That was the worst <laughs> toss of my career. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing I've been noticing. As I have mentioned a lot in the last month, uh, I turned 65 last month. And I've noticed that since I turned 65, my Facebook feed is unbelievably full of invitations to participate in clinical trials of various drugs. It's like I hit some kind of deadline there like all of a sudden now I qualify to be in these trials and I'm just inundated with them Julie did you ever notice this no I didn't I mean I've got a couple but not I I wouldn't use the word inundated maybe you're being targeted for some reason Liz maybe I am maybe I post about health a lot whatever and I always think when I see them now I think about our sister Monica who is a nurse and has been in clinical research for much of her career. And she's always encouraging women to sign up for these clinical trials because they don't have enough women who sign up for them. So maybe these companies are like trying to remedy the problem of not having enough women in clinical trials. Anyway, like there was one of them, I got one earlier this week. It's a new flu shot thing. So you can sign up to be in this clinical trial where Half the group gets a regular flu shot Mm -hmm. and the other half gets a test mRNA flu shot, a new fangled flu shot. So I haven't decided about that one yet because I, you know, I always hear mom in our, in my head, like, yes, you must get, did you get, did you get your flu shot? shot? Every phone call in the fall (laughs) would start that way. Correct. Yes. 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 And then there were a couple of others that I got, but then here's one that I got that I thought, huh, okay, this. This is something I would be interested in, Um, but I have a question for you guys. This is an Alzheimer's drug. So I think this study is being done by Lilly, and the study is called Trailblazer ALZ3. And it said, we are looking for men and women ages 65 to 80 who have normal memory, thinking, mood, and behavior patterns. So question number one. Do I? (laughs) Well, I would put you more in the exceptional category (laughs) than the normal category. Okay. All right. But, uh, and who may be at risk for developing Alzheimer's in the future, which I say we're all in our father died of Alzheimer's. So we're all in that category. So, so I thought, okay, well, I'll take this test and see if I qualify. And I really thought I was acing the test. Uh, And (laughs) was it a memory test, Liz? (laughs) No, it was not. No, this is just to see if you qualified to be in the study. Okay. So it, it was just super, super simple things like, how old are you? Do you have any other neurological diseases? Things like that. They want to get people out of the study who would have, I think they call them confounding variables, Julie. Anyway, so I was acing the test until I got to the trick question. Uh, <laughs> oh, one of the tests was, you. would you be willing to have an MRI or a PET scan? Yeah, sure. I've had like 16 in the last year. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like MRIs are now like a part-time job that I was asked. it. What is your favorite fall soup? Perhaps was that the question? <laughs> no, the trick question was, it says this study requires a study partner. Do you have someone who is familiar with your day to day who would notice any changes? And the choice of answers are yes, no, and unsure. So when you live alone, I don't know. I think the answer is no. But then again, I thought, well, do you guys see enough of me to be my study partner? Like, A, would you actually be observing changes in me? And B, if you are, 
do I want to hear about it from you? <laughs> right. <laughs> So I would go back to question A, do you want us observing your changes? <laughs> and I think the answer to that is probably no, but no, no, but you don't, you don't want us. I mean, you, would you really want us to be observing you in that kind of way? I don't know, but I would assume that you probably are anyway, not on purpose. <laughs> like, judging? You- just, ge- just, just general just judging. Yes. Casually, constantly judging. <laughs> That's, you know, I mean, we're laughing. This is obviously very serious, but, you know, I do remember how long it took mom to really notice dad's Alzheimer's effects, you know, and there she was living with him day to day. The the idea of needing a study partner for something like this, I can totally understand why, why that would be the case. Anyway, so I haven't signed up for that. I, I finished the quiz. I sent it in. I said, I'm in the unsure category for study partner, I do not think Hooper qualifies for that. He's the only one who sees me every day. But anyway, I am interested in supporting clinical trials for things that will be treating women. So I'm trying to say yes to some of these. So anyway, that is my point. Medical studies, we want to make sure that they're studying more women as they develop these drugs, which will be super important to us in the future. Good for you. I would be your study buddy. I mean, I feel like the thing is we don't really see each other that much. Right. No, people right. don't understand that. Like we communicate yes. every day. And even yeah, when but we, we wouldn't know what's going on in your apartment. Right. Like it's, you know, like all right. your clothes were on the floor or something like right. that. Right. We wouldn't know that. Yeah. Or all your right. bills were stuffed in a drawer, things like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the things mom noticed is that yeah. dad had yes. not paid the bills in months. Yeah. Yes. That, that mm-hmm. came as a shock to her. I yeah. think yeah. that's a, they say that's a very common thing with Alzheimer's patients. Right. Um, they just can't handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Whereas I'm just so poor at paying my bills. All I was gonna say, <laughs> it's going to be hard. You are exceptional. <laughs> We'd be happy to judge you, Liz. That's, I think, keep that in mind. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Well, and, well, I mean, I can see you're struggling because you want to do this honestly. Can sisters, did you see this week? I mean, it's unbelievable. There were cheating s- scandals in three different sports, in chess, in poker, and in uh, professional fishing. Okay. All right. I I haven't seen any news. Oh, okay. Wait till you hear this. Okay. First of all, the fishing one is hilarious. Okay. We're going to get to that last, but the first two, I'm just going to say they involve vibrations. Okay. That's it. Okay. Allegedly the chess organ, the chess organization, organization is going to invest a cheating uh, a cheating allegation that was made by the world master world champion Magnus Carlson okay he has accused the other grandmaster that he was playing Hans Niemann of cheating okay I cannot go into the specifics of the allegation. you are just going to have to look it up but the specifics there's a lot of things swirling around regarding of vibration and okay. this is something that was internal vibrations okay Joel. but okay Joel. anyway but that th- th- that um you know they're having a problem with online chess because there's a lot of cheating involved in that because they they have no way to monitor or regulate regulate what's going on but this was a match that was in person huh. but yet they still have situations where coaches that are watching the match they're moving to certain positions in the room and that is signaling the of uh, the players about what move to make i mean cheating that's just cheating oh we wow that's straight that. up cheating yeah okay, okay. Second, second one involved a high stakes poker game. This is a, a, a poker player, Robbie Jade uh, Lou, Lou. Okay. She's, she is now blaming sexism and bullying of, of, because what happened in this case, she is accused of wearing a vibrating ring. Okay. She had a ring on during a match in which she made a very bold bet, you know, low percentage bet. She had a handful of jacks and she bet she pushed all of her chips in, you know, it was a really dramatic bet. And um, the person who she lost to, they accused her of cheating, that 
somebody was watching everybody else's poker hands and center of vibrating signal on the <laughs> vibrating Ooh. ring. Okay. Ooh. This is just amazing. Like, so that and sounds then, like oceans 14 or something. It does like sound it. like oceans 14. <laughs> and after they gave her the prize money, then Garrett um, Edelstein sort of chased her down a dark hall and forced her to give the money back, accusing her of cheating. But now she's saying, no, I wasn't cheating. And this is all bullying and sexism. They just didn't believe that a girl could win the poker match or that someone would make this bold bet. OK, oh, oh. so that is a to be continued. Can I but just say on that one, it could be one of those devices, you know, how they all like buzz you every hour now to remind you to get up and walk around could have right. been as simple as that <laughs> well it might have been liz but maybe not again they're poker players okay. right all right yep. it's just, okay but the third one and this this law enforcement is involved in this there's serious controversy controversy in pro fishing tournament okay this is multiple time winners okay there are these two guys that fish a lot together and what they were doing they were caught stuffing lead weights and other fish fillets down the throats of the fish that they caught Liam okay <laughs> all right so these fish were supposed to come in their walleyes they were sure. supposed to come in about 25 pounds but their fish were 33 pounds Oof. okay and they're winning a lot of money these are hundreds of thousands of dollars they're making as pro fishing people okay um, there's a whole tournament cir a circuit they're out there but they were like but the judges just felt like the fish were like really heavy and they were squeezing the fish okay and that's when they noticed it was a little you know a little hard it wasn't it didn't feel like a fish mm -hmm. and so they took this unprecedented move to cut the fish open and lo and behold they found all these weights and other like i don't know they put jammed like salmon and you know tilapia down the <laughs> other fish's <laughs> fish's mouth Okay. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, I they, mean, it's, cheating is bad, but that cheating that, is bad. But these, the, these schemes that they're ooh. coming up with are really uh, amazing. And, I guess uh, I never knew there was that much money at stake, but of course, if there's a lot of money on the line, people are going to think up stuff. You're yes, going to juice the walleye. Yeah. You're yes. going to juice that walleye. Sure. But, but fish stuffing one kind of fish inside another kind of fish that just seems wrong on a whole different level, like on a moral level. No, it's diabolical. Well, you, you read where he stuffed that thing in the chess match. You're going to find that not very good either. Liz. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Oh, I'm done with that. Okay. okay. And so, no more cheating. Okay. Okay. So we've been laughing about that, but now, um, now we have something kind of serious to talk about. We have two sports stories. One is very, very bad. And the other one is very, very delightful. So let's start with the very bad one. You may have seen the headlines today that have some really shocking details about an investigation just published into abuse in women's soccer. And the investigation itself was conducted by Sally Yates. Remember her? Sally mm -hmm. Yates, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, assistant uh, attorney general. Anyway, so she, she was hired to do this study. And in the study, she found sexual misconduct, verbal abuse, and emotional abuse by coaches in the National Women's Soccer League. That's, that's the pro league. So uh, there are so many things in here that are so bad. But what is really just predictably bad is that the study found that the leaders of the NWSL and the U.S. Soccer Federation, as well as the owners and the executives at the teams, like they failed to act on this, even though players had been complaining for years. Yeah. And That's then this, this, does this sound familiar? And that abusive coaches were able to move freely from team to team. So they'd get fired by one team and they would just show up at another team and nobody at the original team would, uh, would tell the new team why they were fired. So it's just, it's just awful to think about, isn't it? Right. The same old terrible pattern uh, where people are able to abuse young children yes. yeah, and, yeah. And, and young athletes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are grown ass women, right? But one of the, it is interesting, Julie, what they say is that, that, the NS NWSL abuse, Sally Yates said, it's rooted in a deeper culture in women's soccer, beginning in youth leagues, 
that normalizes verbally abusive coaches and blurs boundaries between right. coaches and players. Right. So it starts young, right? It starts then, young. Yeah. Yes. And that women players are trained young to sort of accept abusive coaching. And so I'd say just from like working around in sports a lot, not so much youth sports, but with adult athletes, both male and female, that this is super alarming and not specific to soccer. Wouldn't you say? I mean, well, we've already seen it in gymnastics, right? I'm sure this, I'm sure maybe we might see it in women's basketball. You know, I mean, the things that these coaches and the leadership, you know, people in leadership positions were doing, they were terrible. Like it was like, come to my house for a meeting. Oh, here's porn. And I'm going to, you know, pleasure myself when force you to watch. Yes. I mean, they were terrible, yeah. very specific accusations. That's why it's so shocking to me in light of the gymnastics scandal of a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and other me too scandals, like why they continue, the leadership people continue to deny that these things are happening. Yeah. Like, what are they hoping to gain? I And some of these were women. You know, one was the U.S. Women's National Team coach. She was a woman. She knew what was happening. Yeah. So it's it's not even just the men in the leadership positions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought, found it so disturbing and extraordinary. And, and it was just also super duper creepy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and it's so, not 1980, right? No, it's, you know, no. I mean, we, we, you know, it, this is not like, oh, we didn't know, or, you know, this is, we, you know, everyone is sensitized to these issues now, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Julie, it was the players protesting publicly a few years ago that even got this investigation started. <laughs> Wouldn't you think that in any league of any sport, they would be paying attention to these kinds right. of issues? That you're not doing, you, yeah. that, that there isn't training uh, for the coaches yeah. that should go on about what's appropriate and not appropriate behavior at yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for the, the coaches and the players. That, yeah. Because the players need to be emboldened to speak out at an even younger age, right? And uh, I've been seeing a lot of this on Twitter in the last 24 hours with a lot of the women in sports that I follow. And women are commenting that women are taught to feel like if they speak up, they will be endangering the league and the sport itself because women's sports is so, quote, fragile. So you, you're you sort of self-silencing because you don't want to do anything that's bad for the league. And obviously, that's terrible for the sport overall. And that just cannot be the way we continue forward. Yeah, the report stated that there was just shocking lack of training uh, in in these areas and uh, there had never been, which is unbelievable. Um, But also what a shame, too, because there are a couple of really successful franchises in in uh, the women's soccer league here in the United States. And the Portland franchise is one of them. And they were, uh, you know, heavily there was a lot of abuse happening from the from the coach there and then from the leadership team just shuffling that coach off to another team and not, not speaking up. So it's a shame because there, you know, there's a, a lot of fans of women's soccer mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of great franchises there, but yeah, the league is doing incredibly well. Yeah. As you say, yeah. the Portland Thorns is like their number one. I I know several friends who are season's ticket holders at the Thorns. The team here in LA, Angel City FC, they've sold three times as many season's tickets as they expected. They've gotten three times the amount of sponsorship as they expected. So the sport is not as fragile as they're telling the athletes. Right, today. right. Yeah. So anyway, it's just... You get so tired of seeing these kinds of reports over and over again, because you're right, Julie, it's not the 80s anymore. Mm -hmm. We know people need to be paying attention. Yeah. Okay. so on a much brighter side, uh, shout out, I think the Satellite Sister of the Week Award and Wiley Veteran of the Week Award, uh, (laughs) I'm going to call it, goes to my hero, Joan Benoit Samuelson. So we all know that Joni won the first ever Olympic gold medal in the Olympics in LA in 1984 in the women's marathon. And remember, first ever time the women's marathon was even allowed in the Olympics. So remember that. And she's my age. She is 65. Uh, Anyway, this past weekend, Joni ran the London marathon in three hours and 20 minutes, sisters. Okay. (laughs) That's pretty great. So excellent. Yeah. So she won her age group. You won't, you won't be surprised. <laughs> good, good. And what I love is she ran it with her daughter, Abby. Abby ran 258. 
So Abby is no slouch. And what Joni said at the end, she said, she may have beaten me with my replacement knee, but everyone said I wouldn't do it. I will never say never. And she said, I'm a grandmother now to Charlotte, and it's my goal to run a 5K with her. So come on, as if she wasn't a a big enough hero already. There she is, Wiley Veteran of the Week, out there doing it. You know, she was at the World Championships this summer, so I had a chance one night to have dinner with her because we worked together way back in the day. And not only was she telling me about her plan to finally run all of the world marathons, all of the big ones, um, but she's still working with like young athletes, uh, college athletes, and athletes fresh out of college just to make sure they get coached correctly and led correctly. I mean, it sort of relates to what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. When you have Mm -hmm. quality people like Joan Benoit Samuelson in the sport, really looking after the younger athletes, making sure they're brought up and trained in the right way. You just think, thank goodness for people like that. So anyway, we've always loved you, Joni. And now we love you even more. That's all I want to say about that. All right, stay with us. We're the Satellite Sisters. Blake Shelton collab with Land's End up next. Liz, weren't we just talking about taking action today for a healthier tomorrow? Yes, it's important, Liam. Well, that is exactly what Everly Well believes. Their at-home lab tests can help you get the knowledge and support you need so you can become a healthier you. Everly Well is a digital healthcare company designed for you at an affordable and transparent price. With over 30 at-home lab tests, you're able to choose the test that makes the most sense for you to get the answers you need, like the women's health test or the food sensitivity test. Here's how it works. Everly Well ships products straight to you with everything you need in one package. You take your at-home test, simply collect the samples and use the included prepaid shipping. Mails back to a certified lab and your physician reviews results get sent to you on your phone or device in just days. And here's the key, Liz. You can share those results with your primary care physician to help guide next steps. It's so easy. We've all taken the at-home test. We all were able to do it at home. We followed Mm -hmm. the directions. We mailed it in. And when we got the results back, it's just something super handy to take to your primary care physician. We really think this is a great opportunity for people who want to take care of their health. So for listeners of Satellite Sisters, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash sisters. That's everlywell.com slash sisters for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Everlywell.com slash sisters. Thanks, Everly Well. We're back. We're the Satellite Sisters. All right, sisters, I I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you the new collaboration, Lands and Blake Shelton. All right, Jewel, you're a huge... You're a huge Blake Shelton fan. I know that, right? Sure. Why not? Why not? Sure. I mean, he's he's the best judge on the uh, voice. You know, he keeps winning year after, you know, season after season. Well, here you go. So I arrive in this story starts before the actual uh, collab. I arrived in Bend, Oregon. It's an 800 mile, 12 hour drive. We get here and immediately, do you ever go on a trip and you think I've packed all the wrong things? Have you no. ever had? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. So. Sure. I got to Oregon and it, the weather was, you know, it was in the forties and I'm like, I have packed all the wrong things, but we arrive and I see a couple of a package on the front, on the front porch. And I remember, oh, I ordered two new bathing suits and I had them sent here to Oregon. And then I remembered, holy cow, I also ordered a new down vest. Thank you, Leon Dolan. So- <laughs> You're more, you're, you're, you're more clever than you thought, Liam. <laughs> saved by the Land's End package. And I open it up and there's this special catalog, Julie. Okay. Land's End, our new collaboration with Blake Shelton. Okay. Now, when you think of Blake Shelton, what do you think of? You think of flannel shirts and blue jeans, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. That's what he's been wearing for like the 25 seasons on the, on the voice. <laughs> yes. Julie, that's incredible that you say that because here is what fashion icon Blake El- Shelton says on the first page of the Land's End catalog. I wear pretty much the same thing every day. So there you go. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's easy. I like fashion it. Icon. It's, fashion that's icon. A, that's a, a fashion philosophy. It's a good one. It's solid. Yeah. So I'm I'm scrolling through this. You get Western shirts. You know you're going to get some flagship flannel 
from Blake Shelton mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the Land's End catalog. And I'm thinking, would my husband look good in this? No, he would not. But maybe Julie's <laughs> husband would. Oh, you oh, know? oh you think my husband could use a little Blake? Okay. I think he could l- use a little Blake. You know, he's a handsome man, but just put him in some of these, you know, how about a little, uh, how about a little um, uh, corduroy for your husband? Have, oh. Has he ever considered that, Jewel? Oh, he looks really good in corduroy. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Leanne. I'm in. And Blake just keeps delivering the high fashion qu- quotes with things like, these are clothes you're going to want a few of. All right. We're going to want a few of these. <laughs> wow. Think, giving Anna Winter a run for her money. <laughs> really? I don't, Blake wants to know, are you working hard or hardly working, Joel? Because there's a classic <laughs> chambray shirt here that I think Tram would look great in. Okay. Blake's got his guitar and I'm just, I'm moving through the catalog and I'm enjoying it thinking, all right. I feel like that date night sweater may look good on my husband or maybe Julie's husband. Our comfort seems to be Blake's a number one fashion, uh, fashion, <laughs> fashion goal. Uh, my husband yeah. too. He just wants yeah. to be comfortable. Liam. Yeah. Yes. So I feel like I'm getting to the end of the Blake Shelton collab because um, we're, we're at the boxer short section now and the flannel PJs. And guess what? Oh, it's not just your husband. That's going to be in Blake Shelton. There's a Blake Shelton home line, Julie. Home line. <laughs> <laughs> I God. have to live. I have to live in Blake's house now too. Oh just, God, that's no, a just, grand extension whoa. too far. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if I want to go there. Yeah. I, yeah. I What's think in the home line? I, you know, Liz, it's flannel, Liz. It's a flannel <laughs> duvet cover. Come on. Oh. It's Blake Shelton. You don't have to go far. It's just more flannel and plaids <laughs> and flannel. And so I'm thinking, wow, Blake Shelton home. And then I turn the page. And, oh, Julie, maybe you want your dog to dress like Blake Shelton because there's a Blake Shelton dog line, Joel. <laughs> well, Oliver might look cute in a little flannel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A flannel, a flannel bandana. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got oh. it. Flannel okay. bandana. There, a bed cover. You got it. Blake Shelton's <laughs> got one for your dog. And you can even get him a little jacket. So he looks like Blake Shelton, your dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want their dog to look like Blake Shelton? Nobody. <laughs> Liz, I would also say, who doesn't want their kids to wear a picture of Blake Shelton's dog oh. on their t-shirt? Because the very next page, it's the Blake Shelton kids line. They were and- really <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel <laughs> trying to come up with products weren't they oh Joel, I mean, it's not over jewel because oh, then we get oh. to blake shelton women all right oh. well it's we not- know his woman okay she's yeah. on the voice too right <laughs> yeah. but believe me i don't think she's wearing this plaid flannel dress okay so imagine this imagine a blake shelton plaid flannel shirt but just longer because that's what the dress is yeah. <laughs> it's just a longer shirt oh and then finally, you get all your Blake Shelton accessories. You go through, you, you want a cooler tote that's going to make you look like Blake Shelton? Don't worry, he's got one. A trucker hat, he's got one. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing, it's unbelievable. And then again, <laughs> I just want to hear from fashion icon Blake Shelton. Uh, it says, Blake Shelton, country music legend turned fashion designer. He says, I think what I cooked up with Land Zen is going to fit pretty awesome into your world. Jewel, what do you okay, think? Okay, I think it's pretty awesome too. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go. Like, oh my God. Okay. I'm just imagining him home cooking things up. Just yeah. like, what else can I put flannel on? <laughs> Who else looks good in plaid? Yeah, yeah. I want All it right. on my bed, on my dog, on my grandkids. Uh, I want it on my woman. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. I, well, I'm definitely going to check this out, Leah. Okay. 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 I mean, and you're right. Uh, there may be some, you know, some way that you could work it into the next Denim and Diamonds um, event that you're invited to. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I think if you added like a, an underskirt to that, um, that Blake Shelton women's plaid flannel dress, that yeah, would look good. That, that's to see what you're, that's CMA awards. You yes. know, you see what I'm getting at. Okay. All right. Well, we're, it's time for Entertaining Sisters, and here's my first recommendation. It's an unusual one for Entertaining Sisters, but I know you're going to enjoy this because it is Fat Bear Week, October 5th 
through the 11th, okay? And this is, without a doubt, a perfect break for uh, from life. Now, I know we've talked about it, Liz, right, before on um, yes, satellite last system. year we got very excited about satellite. Yes, well, this year, you know, now starting on October 5th, uh, if you go to their website, and it will be in the show notes, thanks to Liz Dolan, you can download um, your brackets for Fat Bear Week oh, because wow. you're going to have an opportunity to vote on your favorite fat bear. And it's a single elimination tournament. Okay. Fans vote online. So you want to get involved. These are adorable bears. They're all between 700 to 900 pounds. Okay. And, um, and there's no actual weighing. Okay. That is, that's important <laughs> that you know that. Okay. So I don't think we're going to have the same cheating that we have in other <laughs> sports. Okay. They just kind of guess the bear's weight. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they don't yeah. actually okay because that would be they're eyeballing like, those bears. Yeah, they they're eyeballing. eyeballing. Okay, mm -hmm. and but but I would have to t I have to tell you that the head of communications for Fat Bear Week. Okay, hold on to your seats right now. Her name is Leon Law. L I A N Leon oh. Law is her name. Wow, I double checked it. Okay, Washington Post reported she is quoted twice as Leon L I A N Law. She said there are going to be a fa there's going to be a Facebook group um, that you should eat salmon during Fat Bear Week. <laughs> that you could make bear shaped cookies. And Leon Dolan, listen to this. She has made a bear inspired Spotify list. Okay. Ah. That's nice. Leon. Well, she sounds like my kind of Leon. <laughs> yes, she is. She is your kind of Leon. Is she, she's the only Leon you know, right? I mean, you've got to contact this woman. Yeah, I don't right? know too many Leans. I, I don't, I know it is a very common Asian first name. So that is, so I have met a couple of Leans. They pronounce it like Leon. It's slightly different, but it is spelled exactly the same. But we're all Leans in my eyes. So uh, we, and we have to stick together. And you know how much I love bears. So I know you love bears. The fact that they have the Spotify list, I mean, bear shaped cookies. This just seemed like you two are on the same channel. So <laughs> I want I, I want you to reach out to her. What do you I have will. to lose? Right. I have nothing I mean, to lose. Jill. OK, nothing there to you lose. have. OK, well, uh, Fat Bear Week is about to start. I also have an entertaining sisters that's anticipatory. And here it is, people. Guess what? Tick tock, tick tock. It's almost Tucci time. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's almost Tucci time again. San Stanley Tucci's show, Searching for Italy, starts again this Sunday on CNN at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So this is season three. Can you believe it? So um, he's got new episodes uh, starting this Sunday. He goes to Puglia, Sardinia. I'm really looking forward to it because I've never been to Sardinia and I think that's a target for me. I realized I've never been on vacation in Italy. What is the matter with me? I don't know. Liz. <laughs> you got to do that. I mean, yeah. When Seriously. Why, why haven't you been to Italy? Liz? I, no, I've been it. to Italy many times for work, Julie, but I've never, I've never stuck around and just enjoyed Italia. I mean, I enjoy it when I'm there, but anyway, so uh, I'm going to meet up with with Stanley in Sardinia if all goes according to plan. So anyway, so the new episodes are Puglia, Sardinia, Liguria, and Calabria, Ooh. which is where his family was originally from, according to their show notes. So anyway, here we go. It's Tucci time. Searching for Italy starts again October 9th. I'm sure there will be much to discuss in upcoming Satellite Sisters. And you can just look forward to more Italian from Liz Dolan, yes. too, which is, <laughs> it's part of the season. Um, I would just say I have a pro tip. I'm not going to really call this a recommendation or anything uh, for uh, for my selection, but I did want to mention because I have just completed reading Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. And I think this is one of the most popular book club selections for the fall season. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, here is my pro tip. Uh, I think the best part about this book is the octopus. And it is possible to read only the chapters um, uh, with the octopus in it. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. And that is pretty pleasurable. Okay. So, so 
I don't know anything about this book. I haven't read anything about it. Okay. Okay. It's, There's an octopus, octopus in it. Octopus You're going to love the octopus. Okay. Just stick to the octopus, Liz. That's okay. that's my okay. that's my pro tip. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, is it me or have there been a lot of movies and books lately about uh, with an octopus as the yes. main character? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. just kind of shocking. Yeah. yeah. Right. There was yeah. that documentary that it exactly. won the Oscar, was nominated for the Oscar. Yeah. Like my okay. favorite octopus, something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, Julie, that's, that's, that is not a review I've read of this book. So um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for adding that. Right. You're welcome. I guess there are no more books to be written about bears, Leanne. So many, so many bear books. <laughs> well, talk to Leanne about her. Okay. Get on, get on the horn. Talk to her. I will. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of books, I am going to be out on a book tour. Thank you, everybody coming to Dallas. We are full in the Dallas States. But this week, um, the the registration for the Long Island event opens up. So I'll be posting about that. You do need to register. Uh, the same with the Pequot Library event. So Connecticut is the 27th of October and Long Island is the 29th of October. Uh, both of those you need to pre-register for. They are free, but you do need to pre-register. So I will continue to spread the link around um and it's always it's always at my website on the events page leanne dolan slash events uh you know the satellite sisters website is rocking and rolling it does Um, yeah it's very interesting over there leanne yeah, we have a lot going on now. We're doing every week we do a blog post for the podcast. So we have a podcast specific page where you can listen straight um, from the page to the podcast. It comes with the notes, the show notes that um, Liz puts in. And then I also do a separate blog post. So if you can't find the notes on the podcast page, you can find them on the blog page uh, and lots of links to listen. So we're doing our best to get you all the information you need. Uh, There's also a work with us column. If you'd like to work with us, there's an about column. And Liz, there's a shop column. And you are, are, um, you're the Blake Shelton of our (laughs) operation. You know, I mean, we do have our own collections of things. Yes, we do. You know, and if you're within the sound of our voices right now, you're probably more in Satellite Sisters world than you are in Blake Shelton world. (laughs) So, you know, I'm just guessing. But I just wanted to remind people that we do have a shop. You can find it at Cafe Press dot com slash satellite sisters I, and again don't even bother to remember that i'll put a link in the show notes and all over the place but if you go to our shop we have all these different collections some that is just logoed merch some that is like classic things that we say like you can't make new old friends you can get you know bags and hats and teas and all kinds of things with that on it on it of course i did recently create a brand new collection that is the Satellite Sisters Silver Summit collection. So if you are having any kind of a girls weekend with your with your old friends and you want to rebrand that as a Silver Summit, that's all there. We've got kids pajamas. I think we have a few dog things. If not, I'm going to make Liz sure. Liz is going to create some. Get we some are. bandanas going. <laughs> anyway, so it's a good time now that it's October. If you want things for like grab bags for your friends over the holidays, Christmas gifts, stocking stuffers, and you're in the Satellite Sisters world, we just remind you, we do have a shop and we invite you there. I'm looking at it, Liz. It looks great. You've been doing great work. So uh, thank you. Thank yes. you. We're just waiting for our call from Land's End. We're waiting for our call. <laughs> I, I, the Satellite Sisters bathing suit collection, I think, is something that we oh. we attempted once. Did yes. uh-huh. Were yes. we not once live on stage? In Land's End bathing suit. Yes, yes. we were. Yes, we were. It's I hard. believe we did it as a joke. Yeah. Yes. Right. It wasn't, there was no cash that changed hands. No. With oh people. yeah. No, 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 we were no. And we did it once and we never did it again. <laughs> I don't even know. I think we only did it in rehearsal and then we cut the bit. Yeah. That's what I, I think that's when we were on tour with Oprah. Am I wrong? Yes, we yeah. were on tour with Oprah. There were yeah. huge numbers of people. Yeah. We, yes. we thought it would be hilarious. And then once we stood on that giant stage in front of that giant like sea of thousands of folding chairs, we thought maybe not so hilarious. Not, not funny. Yeah. But we all had matching lands and bathing suits and it was really <laughs> going to be a statement. And then we cut the bit. Uh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Because we also learned the other critical rule of show business. When you follow Oprah on stage, no one stays to watch you. So <laughs> it would have been the five of us and the three people left in the yes. audience. 
Yeah. So, talk about feeling naked. We yeah. definitely would have <laughs> felt naked. Anyway, go, go to our shop, find some fun stuff for your satellite sisters and misters uh, for all the, the time you're going to be spending with them in the upcoming holiday season. All right. A big thanks uh, to everybody who helps us put on our show. Uh, thanks to Sergio Enriquez. Thank you, Sergio. Today he had some classic advice. Leanne, plug your mic in. Thank you, Sergio. <laughs> uh, 22 years. Every day, every week, we have something. Emily Loudermilk does our graphics, and we love seeing what Emily comes up with. If you want to see what Emily comes up with, go ahead and subscribe to Pep Talk, our weekly newsletter, or follow us on Instagram at Sat Sisters. A big thanks to our sponsors. They make it possible for us to do the show. That is true. And the fact that you support our sponsors is icing on the cake. Thank you so much. It makes the whole thing work. We really appreciate it. All right. Our to-dos for the week. Liz, what do you got on your list? Well, apparently, Leanne, I have to learn everything there is to know about uh, sports gambling. Mm, um, right. <laughs> because well, there might be college- some cheaters in there, Liz. I'm just sure, saying. Yep. Sure, Julie. Well, what we have going on here in California is we have two dueling ballot measures coming up to vote on about legalizing sports betting in person and online. And they've already spent more than $410 million promoting these two competing um, ballot measures. So you literally can't turn on your television without seeing something about whether or not we should legalize sports gambling. So I don't know, Is am I voting for 26 or 27? Am I voting for both of them? Am I voting for neither of them? I don't know. Yeah. I don't I like, I don't even care enough about this yet to have an opinion, but I have to have an opinion by the time, okay. by the time the election rolls around. So that's it. Learning everything there is to know about sports gambling. That's, that's going to be time consuming. <laughs> okay. Full report. Uh, I'm sure we'll get one. Yes. Yep. Okay. For me, I'm just going to do what mom always t- tells us to do to get a flu shot. That's okay. my to do for the week. You sisters should get your flu shots too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Okay. We will. <clears throat> and Leanne, how about you? You know what? Well, I have to finish the book. So I think that seems like the obvious <laughs> item. But, um, you know, while I'm here, I like to gather Oregon tasty treats to take home to California. So things like delicious Oregon honey. There's a couple of good chocolate uh, companies here. There's this one place that makes nut butter that is just out of this world. Mm. So I'm just gathering some Oregon food stuffs to take home with me to California. Okay. So that's and wine. And wine. <laughs> <laughs> And why the good organ Th- wine. things you don't have to declare as you cross the border <laughs> right i when wish i could the- yeah i wish i could take apples but you can't take uh fruit no. in, so, oh you uh, can't do that but you can take apple butter in so that's <laughs> that's what I, that's uh, my alternative yeah i don't want you to get busted at the at the borderland good because no, i gotta be in dallas next week yeah <laughs> yeah okay right all right, we're the Satellite Sisters. Hey, sisters, have a great week. You, you too, Leanne. All right, big love to our new grandniece, Evelyn, and her mom and dad. And don't forget, call your Satellite Sisters.